Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to use uh, some slides. Is somebody here to help me with that? Or? Yes, okay. Well, <clears throat> my headline today is uh, a stronger Nordic voice in international affairs is key to more influence. And I think that was what uh, my good friend Bertil Horder was, was, was saying, and I quite agree with him. Uh, on my first slide, you can see the Nordic countries, and you can see that Greenland is the biggest one, 20 times bigger than Iceland. But under the, the Nordic countries, we have the newest part of, 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 of the Nordic countries, and that is this lava in, 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 in Iceland seen from space. It, it looks like the Gaza, Gaza Strip. It is, a, it is a little bit smaller. It is 20 square kilometers. I think the Gaza Strip is 360. But to remind us that the biggest lava from one eruption in Iceland came actually from that same mountain, and that is 950 square kilometers. So I'm going to use some, some, some pictures from, uh, from this Volcano, this doesn't, okay. Uh, some pictures from, from this uh, volcano, which is strong power, it is not soft power, and uh, the Russians are not the only people that can close the airspace in, 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 in Europe. This uh, volcano can easily do. And uh, therefore, maybe it is not right for me to, to, to use these, these, uh, these slides. But uh, culture, cultural diplomacy is nothing new in, in the Nordic countries. It is not an expression in the old language, but it was practiced. Icelanders recited poems to, to, to kings to get access to the courts. And uh, Egil Skallagrimsson, one of the most famous uh, person in the sagas, and the sagas are, are, are a common heritage. He uh, delivered the poem Head Ransom to King Eric the Blood Axe when actually <coughs> he was caught in a, in a big storm in, in England and he found out that uh, King Eric was, was at York and he decided to, to, uh, to visit his enemy. And uh, <coughs> he was uh, immediately sentenced to death and uh, was to be executed in the morning. But he wrote, not wrote, he, he, he had a poem ready in the morning, and his life was spared. Christianity was adopted in Iceland in, in the year 1000 without a fight, and I think that is uh, one of the best examples of, of cultural diplomacy. Uh, I would just like to say a little bit what it's characteristic by, by the Nordic countries today. We are 25 million people. We have eight languages. We have eight time zones and, and five currencies. Uh, like Bertil Holder said, we are maybe the 11th biggest economy in the world. We have a strong formalized cooperation. And as has been said here many times, we are ranking the highest in the world on, on many, many things. We are living in, under a strong rule of law, social trust, but we have also high, high taxes. And uh, culture is always the, the backbone. We have cultural houses, we have cultural prizes, we have cultural fund, we have a TV fund, and uh, we can, of course, build further on this. And uh, the question today is, can the Nordic better utilize their smart power experience the answer is, 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 is yes, but be, before I go into that, I would like to say something about our, our, our cooperation before I, I come to, the, come to the, 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 the future. It has been very clear in both today and yesterday that each country is a player on its own. That is, of course, uh, what we are doing, but it is also quite clear that together we are much stronger. And uh, there has been a big change in our cooperation. Uh, when, when the Soviet Union 
uh, fault. There was a big change in the, in the Baltic. Uh, we have been uh, creating a close cooperation in, in foreign and, and security policies in the United Nations, in the European Union, in NATO, in the World Bank, like Bertil said, in UNESCO, as has been mentioned here this, 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 this morning. But then the question is, what is next? Uh, what uh, will this crisis in, in between Russia and Ukraine mean? That is, of course, a, 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 a big question. I would like to say something about challenges at, 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 at home. Uh, we think we have a global responsibility to promote the values we, 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 we have in the UN, in the European Union, and so on. We have a big challenge with our welfare system, and it is, it is uh, quite clear that our societies are changing. Uh, we are becoming less homogeneous societies than we were. Uh, we are working very much on sustainability, and I think it is very important that culture is included in every aspect of, uh, of that, that, that work. And uh, the more and more we think of this, this calls for closer cooperation. Then we have some international threats. We have the conflict in Ukraine, we have the conflict in the Middle East, we have always conflicts in, in Africa, we have a situation of great concern in, 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 in Asia, and then I'm talking about the islands, both in, in East and, and East China Sea and the South China Sea. And we always see a striking need for peace and, 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 and stability. And then comes the question, what can we do? Is there anything we can do? I think it is. There is a, a, a big need for building trust and, and the confidence building. Regional cooperation has been a success. Uh, we could extend and increase that regional cooperation. Then I'm thinking of countries like Ukraine, maybe Georgia, and uh, we have been increasing it, but we can do more. And I think we need a policy Nordic policy on, on cultural dip, diplomacy. And uh, it should be created like we have a, a, a regional policy, like we have a, an Arctic policy. And I think certain elements of foreign policy should be formalized. There has been a no to formalizing for foreign policy in the Nordic Council of Ministers. Both the Ministers of Foreign Affairs and the Prime Ministers have been, be, been against it. But I think it could be possible to formalize certain aspects of foreign policy, like extended regional policy, which the Nordic Council of Ministers is working with anyway, Arctic policy, which it is also working with, and then development aid, which was mentioned here by Bertil, and cultural diplomacy. By formalizing this, there would be a, a, a big change in, in Nordic cooperation. And I think we should consider an establishment of Nordic institution for peace and stability. I would like to mention the, the Nordic Institute of Asian Studies as a good example, which has been working now for, for, for 50, 50, 50 years. My time is running, so I'm going to jump to, to my conclusions. Uh, firstly, I would say we should extend neighboring policy to new countries. We should create a policy for cultural diplomacy. We should consider a Nordic Institute for Peace and Stability. We have many institutes on peace and stability in the Nordic countries, so this would not been something quite new, but we could in that way create more cooperation between these institutions by a rather small institution of peace and stability on behalf of all the Nordic countries. 
And I think we should work more actively in international institutions, and we should formalize certain elements of foreign policy in the Nordic cooperation. Is this expensive? No, this is not expensive. We could do this for a, for a rather small amount of money. I'm not going to go into to, to this. So this is the fire in Iceland and the volcano. And uh, if it blows, if, if the fire comes into the ice, then the production of us will, 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 will start. So let's hope that that will not happen, but we can't exclude that, I'm sorry to say.